On this week's weekly video fishing forecast, we have positive fishing action despite the relentless winds this past weekend. We have the info on the free fishing weekend and our correspondents check in from around the island. The Fishing News is sponsored by these fine partners. Today is Thursday, June 23rd. Last weekend's cold front was something we usually see in the fall. Three days of constant wind with gusts up to 40 knots. Understandably why you would stay at home, but if you were able to get around the point in Montauk, it was fantastic fishing. We fished with a rep from Missouri on the fish hooker with Captain Savio, testing out some new product and had great action with the stripers up to 40 pounds with a pick of bluefish also. The blues are feeding on top and the stripers seem to be down deep. Surprisingly, some huge porgies swiped at the jigs as well. Keep an eye out for these new lures after I cast from Yozuri. This weekend South Shore Invitational was canceled due to the blow. The weekend weather is looking good though for the tournament. There is still time to sign up. You can either enter online up to Friday at noon by hitting the link in the description of this video. Now let's get the latest from the Dreamboat and Coastal Kayak Clash contests. With wind and rain since our last update, we have little change in the Dreamboat standings as of May 23rd. The top four total points remain the same with Dean Payella from Springfield, New Jersey in first place with 22 points. Rob Carrizano from East Haven, Connecticut in second place with 18 points. Garrett Weir from Valley Stream, New York in third place with 17 points. And Daniel Del Rosario from Central Islip, New York, in fourth place with 10 points. One notable entry is from William Burke from Bridgewater, Massachusetts, with this four pound sea bass weighed in at Riverview Bait and Tackle. The Dream Boat Fishing Challenge is the fisherman subscriber only multi species fishing competition with a chance to win a new Steigercraft 23 Miami powered by Yamaha, along with many other great prizes. Subscribe now to the Fisherman Magazine to be part of the action. Hey everybody, it's Dave Anderson with a New England edition. I'm just going to give you a quick rundown of what's going on in the Coastal Kayak Clash. We had two fish make the leaderboard this week. One was a 20 and a quarter inch black sea bass caught by Mike Radzizewski, which is good enough for third place in the category. And the other was a fluke, and it was a big one. Let's see if you can guess who caught it. Yeah, that's right, Justin Oser. He's now leading the fluke category with a 27 incher. That adds to his commanding lead in the tournament. He now has 13 points. Mike Radzizewski has four points and there were three others with three points. We still have months to go in this thing, so there's plenty of time to make this thing a ball game. Now we just gotta see who's gonna do it. Saturday and Sunday is a free fishing weekend in New York State. If you ever wanted to give freshwater fishing a try, this weekend you won't need a freshwater license to fish. So grab your white tackle and give it a go. This week's winner of the fuel giveaway from Marine Made in Windhurst was Joseph Talavera. He just won $125 worth of fuel at Bergen Bay Docks in West Babylon. For the month of June, for every $100 you spend at Marine Made, you will get entered into the fuel drawing. A new winner will be picked every week for the month of June. All right, let's go around the map and I'll tell you what I've been hearing. In the Western Bays, they're still seeing a pick of fluke in Jamaica and by Jones. Fire Island Inlet is also seeing decent action with keepers mixed in for those who stick to it. In Mauritius and Shinnecock, the case is fairly the same with Fluke, and the guys working the shallows are seeing steady action with keepers. A friend of mine did manage fish in Shinnecock during the week, and he had about five keepers west of the bridge after putting some time in. The striper bite held up again during the week when boats were able to get out from Jones to Shinnecock Inlet. Fish have been feeding off the bunker pods. Some fish are over the 50 pound mark, unbelievable. In the western reaches of the sound, stripers are still being caught while up by Eaton's Neck in the middle grounds, there's a decent amount of bass there as well. As I mentioned earlier, Montauk is still red hot with stripers with some oversized fish pushing the 50 pound mark. Just as an important reminder, sea bass season opens on the 23rd and the DEC has finally confirmed the 2022 regulations. It will be a 16 inch size limit for sea bass. Anglers will be able to retain three fish from June 23rd to August 31st. From September 1st to December 31st, the bag limit will be increased to six fish per person, which is one less than last year. On another note, the new porgy regulations came through also. The only change is the size limit has increased from nine to 10 inches. Lastly, for you fluke fans out there, Nantucket Shoals is consistently where doormats are. Here is the evidence Josh, Josh and his dad made a trip out and limited out in no time on these jumbo fluke. 
Nice job. Our fly fishing columnist for the magazine, Mark Sadati, gives us a brief overview of the clinic he held at Paul McCain's shop a couple weeks back. Check it out. Hi, I'm Mark Sadati. I'm the fly fishing columnist for the Fisherman magazine, and we just finished a fly casting clinic for River Bay Outfitters where it had 10 people and we all were out there, we had a wonderful day, we had sun, we had the first hot weather of the year, everybody had a good time, and we had a lot of success. People really improved their casting, and all together, uh, it was just a really good experience. Now, my clinics are basically individual instruction in the group setting, so I work with everyone individually on what they need and what they need personally in their casting. And usually what I do is I will give them from one to three small easy changes to do that result in big improvements. So it's much easier to get better. And I thought we were pretty good at, uh, at doing that today. And uh, personally, I, mean, I had a great time. I want to thank Paul. And uh, it, it was just great doing it here at the park and through the shop. Thanks, Mark, for future clinics. Keep an eye out on our broadcast or the magazine's calendar of events for announcements. News 12 meteorologist Rich Van Owen has the weather outlook for the weekend. Rich. Hey, thanks, Matt. Let's check that weekend forecast and see what we got going on. You can always check your favorite apps, favorite websites, weather tools, whatever you got locally. This is a general heads up, general overview across Long Island for the upcoming weekend. So we start out with water temps again, where we've uh, it's a little cooling, uh, some 60s now. It came down a little bit from the past uh, week or two. Uh, wave heights look okay for Saturday. I think a general two to four, the winds won't be too bad, kind of light from the west-southwest. I think we're in good shape. Uh, maybe a few four to eight starting to roll, and I think uh, there'll be that roll that comes in later Saturday night going into Sunday. So just watch for maybe some fours and fives coming in. Uh, the future cast looks pretty good here. Southwest breeze. We don't see much in the way of any rain or storms. I think we're going to be in good shape heading into uh, Saturday night and Sunday. But again, that southwest wind will start to make things a little choppy, especially uh, the western side of Long Island inshore areas. So we'll start to get a little... Uh, you know, choppier and rougher late in the day. High temperature Saturday, we got a warm weekend. We got mostly 80s to perhaps near 90 going into Sunday as well. Check the, uh, the Guru, and there's Saturday. And, you know, general west-southwest, this doesn't look too bad. You know, maybe two to four, not too terrible. A little bit of wind Saturday night. That could make things a little lumpier on Sunday. I think uh, we get more of a west-southwest to southeast breeze late in the day. So if I had to pick, I would say the, the pick of the weekend. Probably going to be Saturday. But overall, it's fishable. looks okay. Be safe. Enjoy. Catch them up as always. Matt, back to you. It's time for our correspondents to check in. Let's start off with Captain Timothy O'Rourke from Montauk. Tim. Thank you, Matt. Well, greetings, everybody, from Montauk. As everybody kind of experienced last weekend, it was a bit windy, weather wasn't so cooperative, so a lot of people missed out on that weekend. But uh, back to the bass front, fishing's been incredible. Um, still a lot of consistent striped bass on the diamond jig, umbrella rigs, anything you want to throw at them really, flies, poppers, um, all types of stuff, bucktails, you name it, it's been good. It's been great fishing for the kids. I have a picture of Tim Mullen on his annual birthday party with a bunch of Montauk local kids. They did really good on the Double D. Uh, Flukin's really picking up. Um, I have a picture of Seamus O'Reilly and Tyler Persan. They both caught some really nice fish. Seamus' fish was a 33-inch fluke. That was on the annual Father's Day trip on the Viking. So those guys did really well, and there's plenty of flukes starting to show up now that the water's warming up. In regards to offshore report, um, Steven Senior Forsberg, he took the Viking Star offshore for a mixed tile trip. They did really good on the tile fish. I got some pictures of that. And they also were surprised with a, um, three yellow fins up to 80 pounds and a bunch of bluefin, uh, I think like five or six bluefin tuna right in the 45 uh, pound range. So I got a couple pictures of that as well. As everybody knows, uh, June 23rd, sea bass opens. Uh, everybody's been looking forward to that because that's been a big bycatch while people have been trying to fluke. All right, everybody. Hopefully this weekend the weather cooperates. Get on out there and enjoy yourself. From Sag Harbor, we have Will and Andy. All right, thanks, Matt. So uh, bite around Sag Harbor. Striped bass has been pretty good. We got a pick for the bluefish, um, but, you know, works out well. We got some nice stripers the other day. Um, whether live bunker, jigging, whatever you got to do, get it done. Some good bass in the pods, the bunker pods, too, out of the ocean. Even the conic as well. Um, again, picking through those bluefish, but very solid bite. Awesome, yeah, and we're excited. Bottom fishing is continuing to heat up. 
We have black sea bass coming very soon, so those tasty sea biscuits will be, uh, will be very exciting. And we've also seen some efforts of people sharking recently, some nice threshers, which are super exciting. And the canyons are starting to heat up, so that's all hopefully only going to get better. Thanks, Matt. Now back to you. From Shinnecock, let's check in with Mike Dean. Thanks, right here, everyone. Pretty good fishing going on, even though we had that crazy wind last week. Uh, Monday, got out, a uh, nice little bonus, uh, three-day weekend day. Got some nice bass, some riches. We were out front, a lot of bunker pods. We snagged a few. We got them on circle hooks through the dock. No, no real luck, but when we took those snag bunker to the inlet, uh, about an hour into incoming, had some nice fish. My little guy got his personal best. It was uh, like 32, 33 inches. Um, got some pictures, got it back in, didn't really try too hard with the bogey to get the weight. Um, so, and off the beach has been some really nice blues. Uh, Dave Dalva and his son Zach got into a few last week um, in West Hampton. And, you know, it's not as good as before the blow, but it seems to, the bite seems to kind of be developing back a little bit. Um, I was just on the beach, a couple of, couple of blues that were, you know, nice fighting size on the surf rod and a couple of schooly bass. So on the fluke front, not a lot of people have been out, so haven't heard too many reports. A few guys that did get out, you know, it has been good. Everyone's looking forward to obviously the opening of sea bass, and that should be excellent with nobody, you know, being able to uh, target them. So um, looks like we got some good fishing ahead. The weather's going to cooperate. So get out there as usual. Let us know down in the comments. Hit me up on social media on your catches. Any questions or uh, whatnot. So have fun this weekend, everyone. I'll talk to you next week. Back to you, Matt. Dylan Jewell from Mauritius has this report. Dylan. Thanks, Matt. Hey, Long Island. Hope everyone's had a good week out on the water. The bass bite on the surf has been okay. There's still a few uh, big fish prowling around the beaches at nighttime. Uh, bass still on bunker pods, central south shore. Uh, fished over 50 pounds still being pulled. Um, Montauk has been red hot. Lots of big bass out there. Uh, big bluefish out on the rips. The boats are just, just absolutely crushing them. Um, fluke fishing's been decent. Uh, the water's been getting warmer every week, so that bite's been picking up. Um, over on the north side of Montauk, bluefish bite continues to be good. Um, tuna bite. Tuna has been really getting hot. Uh, lots of bluefin around right now. Uh, lots of overs. Boats have been doing really well with fish, you know, close to 200 pounds. Um, North Fork has been pretty good with uh, porgies. Not a bad porgy bite going on over there. Um, reminder, sea bass opens today and they up the size limit. It is uh, 16 inches now. So just be mindful for everyone that's going to be targeting them. Uh, this way everyone's in compliance. Um, that's what I got for you guys this week. Uh, hopefully everyone gets out, catches some fish, and uh, talk to you guys next week. Back to you, Matt. From Northport, we have Mark McGowan from Cow Harbor Bait and Tackle. Last week we had Saturday, rough seas, but Operation Real Heroes was a huge success. So many memories created. Special thanks to Patrick and Summer for putting the whole thing together and all the sponsors. You know, you should reach out for next year if you got a boat and get involved. This is great way to give back to our uh, wounded warriors and really give a kudos to those military people and let them know that we love them and they're very special to us. God bless America and God bless our veterans. Now on to the week that we're going to have fishing. It's fantastic. So far we've been seeing the resurgence of bluefish. They're still here. They should be spawning. So I would be looking for bluefish coming in and out of the harbor depending on what waves of bait are coming in. Right now we've got butterfish on the outside, we have bunker on the outside, and uh, now we're start, gonna start seeing peanut bunker emerge in the back harbors along with lots of spearing. The off the moon hatch, so I wouldn't expect to see any type of cinder worm hatch or a shrimp hatch or anything or a sand eel hatch just right now. We're in between the moon phases, but the water temps are still keeping down. They're staying cool because of this weather that we've had. You know, there's a lot of strange winds going on, so you have to pick your moments and keep your eye on those weather forecasts. They're really, really important. Another point out of safety is that, you know, seeing a lot of people out there without PFDs 
and not really understanding the current. If you're on a boat and you're on anchor, please be aware of the currents if you decide to have a guest or yourself jump off the boat and uh, swim around. You might want to have a tethered rope to yourself, stay out of a channel. You don't want to go swimming in a channel, but we're seeing it up here and we really don't want to see any accidents. Every life is very precious. And uh, so if you see something, you see a friend, you know, don't be afraid to, to speak up and do it politely, of course. And uh, as far as the beach scene goes, those piping plovers, you know, they're really upsetting a lot of people. They're wrecking the access. Piping plovers really has got to be dealt with because I almost feel like um, there is such a crushing suppression on the surf casting community after we buy all of these expensive uh, access passes for vehicles and you follow the rules and people are doing really good and then the powers to be decide to shut the whole place down it's really cruel and it's not fair to a lot of people even the ones that are practicing conservation and don't want to see these birds get hit um we got to do something it's definitely something that needs to be addressed as far as uh, the fishing, we've got sea bass opening up here. Uh, the bluefish are here. They're spawning out in the sound right now. So don't expect them to go anywhere. They're here to stay and they're beautiful when you can get involved with them. We've got plenty of striped bass. The chunking is red hot. The trolling is red hot. Jigging is red hot. If you can find the bass, you know, they are, they're tricky sometimes. Uh, it seems like they have locked jaw and then all of a sudden a switch on, it's like the bite's on for a good hour, two hours and it's, you're getting some quality fish. Practice those catch and release. If you have any questions, definitely reach out and ask because we're here for you all the time. We know this recession hurts, you know, and gas costs a lot. That's why at Cal Harbor, we always have customer loyalty points. When you come here and you buy, you enter the customer loyalty points program, it's absolutely free. And uh, as you earn your points, you get store credit back and you absolutely can apply that to whatever purchase you like. Doesn't matter whether it's on sale. We don't get into a whole list of exclusions. You spend your money. Our family business is so appreciative. We want to give some back. You know, it's always great speaking with everybody and hearing all the feedback and the wonderful comments from these reports. I totally value them and I want to say thank you so much. Till next week, I bid you all peace and tight lines. From the Fire Island area in Great South Bay, let's check in with Captain Al Lorenzetti. Hey Matt, uh, Fire Island report. Uh, fishing's decent, fluke fishing's kind of slow. Waiting for another batch of fish to come through the inlet. But uh, blue fishing, they're blitzing all over the place. That's a blast. Having a great time with that. Uh, some weak fish around early morning during the week when it's quiet. That seems to be most productive. Uh, but basically in the back, Ocean Beach, West Channel, those kind of areas and uh, striped bass they're around but boy you better have the right combination the right bait the right time the right place if you want to hook up some bunker or offshore fire island i was out there the other day but nothing really on them but they're there and hopefully something's going to show up on them pretty soon and it looks like fairly decent weather this coming weekend so uh, it should be a good time to get out there catch them up and have fun so that's it for this week matt talk to you next week with our fly and freshwater report, we have Paul McCain from River Bay Outfitters. Hello, Matt. Well, my wife and I decided to do a little exploring and camping on Long Island. We actually decided to spend the weekend, this is Father's Day weekend, uh, out in uh, Indian Point, which is Indian Island, I'm sorry, Indian Island campgrounds. Uh, it's a terrific place and it's close to a lot of things. Unfortunately, the wind, it was windy all the time. We couldn't get out in the canoe or the kayaks. Uh, it, every time we fished, the wind always just turned and blew into our face. But I did manage to catch a few sea robins. But we, what we really wanted to do was relax. We actually did go to Sag Harbor uh, for lunch and uh, see some friends. We ran into a good friend of mine, Jim Levinson and uh, Mark Sadati, And they've been telling me they've fish, been fishing the Montauk out, of course, Jim's a, a guide, so he's been going out and fishing out in the rips and off the point and just all around, and he's been doing very, very, very well, catching some really nice fish. Uh, we did see a boat. We thought about, ah, maybe we should buy it, but it just wasn't right for uh, fly fishing, so we passed on it. But anyway, uh, as far as the freshwater scene, Mark's, uh, Mark Malinowski and myself, we guided a group, a family group, 
that was uh, uh, just beginners in fly fishing. We took them to the Kanekwa, and of course, Sue and a crew have been putting in a lot of fish into the river, and there's some big fish. We had a terrific time. Uh, they all had fish on, they all landed a fish, uh, so they all had a great day. Uh, as, far as, um, uh, as far as the ponds go, plenty of fish, all the bluegills are on their beds, the bass are on their beds, you're allowed to target them now. There is no close season for black bass. It's catch and release though, so don't be, be honest. Would you keep anything out of these ponds anyway? I wouldn't. But anyway, as far as uh, everything goes, if the weather holds, hopefully I'll be out there this week. Uh, until next week, tight lines. Let's get the latest from Matt Bauer. Hey Matt, it's Matt from Capture Bait and Tackle. The uh, fishing in the area has still been pretty solid. The fluke bite has been really consistent inside the bay. There's been uh, plenty of keepers coming up off the pier. Uh, my boss got a five pound fluke right outside the shop on Gulp yesterday. Um, a secret that's been outperforming Gulp and spearing has been live killies if you can get them. Um, it's really like five fish to one fish. It's it's pretty crazy how much of a difference it makes. Uh, it's just hard to get them. Um, on my YouTube channel, I Fish LI, I have a video comparing um, live killies to um, gulp or spearing. So definitely go check that out. Um, what else? Cocktail blues inside the inlet. There's been a ton of people getting on blitzes. You can find the birds working, you can find the bluefish. Uh, that's really it for this week. Um, looking forward to getting on some fish and I'll report back to you guys next week. From Oceanside, we have Joey Leggio. Hey Matt, what's going on? Uh, this is the report for the Jones Inlet Debsland area. For starters, I'd like to rewind a little bit. I did miss the report last week and I want to talk about the thresher fishing that's been going on outside our inlet. Guys, there's been some real nice catches and some real big sharks. Nikki had one over 400 pounds. Uh, he had two actually, he had a 300 plus and a 400 plus pound thresher. There was a, a couple others that were over the 300 pound range. Timmy had a nice big one too. Um, lots of action guys. There is a tournament this weekend, just basically don't overrun those sharks. They're fairly close. If you see those bunker pods by the tank, it's, it's just worth stopping on top of them and throwing some baits out there and see what's gonna happen. You might be pleasantly surprised and also take the winning fish home. Uh, also offshore, we had the tuna bites been going on pretty well. I'm hearing reports from the Bacardi. Uh, Adam Ross had a nice one. I believe it was about 185 pounds in that area. Also Seamus uh, weighed one in too at Bay Park Fishing Station. Um, as of this weekend, the sea bass regs have kicked in. They are now three fish at 16 inches. So make sure you don't go with last year's regs. These just kicked in, I believe it was actually today, uh, for the sea bass. So that's a great fish to catch. Love them, love eating them. So excited to see that that's gonna be happening this weekend. Um, the surf fishing, little Dylan was out with his dad, Squiddy. They caught a beautiful little keeper striper off the surf. So awesome to see these young kids out there doing it. So nice job, Squiddy, getting him out there fishing. Jimmy Jr. was out with Jimmy Sr. They won clam chumming down by the um, <clears throat> down by the bridge. The father and son team were rewarded at some beautiful fish with these two beautiful keepers to come home with. And uh, he told me they were actually tossing keepers back. And that's awesome that these bass are still in the bay like they are. Uh, speaking about the bass in the bay, I did have out Dave, Christina, and her two brothers for Father's Day. And uh, the duo, <clears throat> excuse me about that. The team actually caught, uh, I believe it was 15 stripers with a bunch of keepers in the mix too. Also, we got inundated with a lot of dogfish as well. Uh, Raf took a ride over to see Josh over at Gypsy and he went fluke fishing in the bay and also the ocean. And I believe the boat had 20 something keeper fluke on the boat with Raf getting two keepers up to about four pounds. Uh, so there was some nice action over there. Also, what I forgot to mention, last week there was a, a cobia caught while fluke fishing down in the Rockway area. And also my buddy Avi was out and uh, he had one too while uh, fluke fishing, which was quickly released, a much smaller fish than the other one that was caught. So that's always a good sign, seeing these cobia uh, come in again. I believe that's all for my report that I have right now. Sorry, I'm reading my notes. I can never remember all these things. But uh, that's basically the guys get out there. The reef is gonna take off right now, especially with sea bass opening. The porgies have made a showing. So that's always great fun and also a lot of good eating fish to be had on those reefs. Uh, but other than that, that's it. And I'll talk to you soon, Matt. Chris Landry has the Jamaica Bay Report. 
Thanks, Matt. As the bigger stripers leave Jamaica Bay, we're being invaded by the yellow-eyed demon. The much maligned and highly underrated bluefish are super fun to catch. They're so aggressive, jumping out of the water. Just remember to check your leader after every catch. They're on these tiny baits, uh, particularly these little peanut bunker. The, the bay is starting to get full of tiny little baits, so match the hatch or use small top waters. Otherwise, a lot of the action is outside of Rockaway Beach. Shark week. All right, Rockfish Charters, the legendary Rockfish Charters, got on this 369-pound thresher shark. They were targeting them, and after sifting through a number of 80-pound brown sharks, they finally landed this monster. Felix Perez, a.k.a. Fizo, told me about the bite. He said, all you got to do is go to these coordinates. Just go out to... And if you go to those coordinates, you're likely to catch a thresher, and you're also likely to see me. I'm trying to get in on the fun, so I went down to Bernie's, where I got this Penn Squall 30 wide with a 100-pound braid, 100-pound top shot. All right, so I'm looking to take a rockaway sleigh ride with one of these threshers. Definitely going to do catch and release. So be safe out there. Tight lines, and back to you, Matt. Last week, we checked in with Captain Ben Gilmore from Marina Pez Vela down in Costa Rica. Hello guys and checking in here from the Marina Pez Vela, Costa Rica. Welcome to this week's fishing report. We've had some just insane rooster fishing this week, guys. This week alone aboard my boat Good Day, we've released 24 trophy rooster fish. Absolutely amazing fishing. The largest fish went 60 to 65 pounds and quite a lot in the 40 to 50 pound range as well. Come and see us guys if you want a tro trophy rooster fish. Offshore, we've had some good sail fishing. One of our boats here today released 10 sailfish. Great numbers for this time of year. Yesterday, we caught a big, big bull Dorado and lots of schooly Dorado also. Hope to see you down here in Costa Rica soon, guys. Back to you. Remember to like our video, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and tap on the bell to be notified instantly when we post a new video on YouTube. Check out this video's description on YouTube for all the related links and index for specific reports. Please support our correspondents by visiting their websites and social media pages. See you all right here next week at thefisherman.com.